What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Swaggy back. So apparently the Rockets and Nets have come to an agreement for a trade about Harden. It's not finalized. However, this is concerning to me for two reasons. The Rockets seem to be rushing a Harden trade. They know that Harden wants to be forced in the Nets. They have the rights to his contract. Though. Harden is under contract for the Rockets for two more years. The Sixers, apparently, according to multiple sources, are not willing to move Ben Simmons. They feel like Doc Rivers is going to be able to bring Embiid and Simmons together, which could be true for all we know. I mean, I can't blame them for not wanting to trade Harden. But keep Harden. You're risking trading James Harden for assets that are nowhere near his worth. For example, Drew Holiday last night was traded for three first-round picks and two pick swaps. Drew Holiday is on an expiring contract. Take a look at Robert Covington. He was traded for two first-round picks. Drew Holiday and Robert Covington are not even all-star players. Like Drew Holiday is a great player, don't get me wrong, but he's not an all-star. Robert Covington's not an all-star. James Harden is not an all-star. He's a superstar. James Harden is a top five player at basketball, if not a top three. The guy has been averaging 30 plus, 36, 34, 31, 29. Like James Harden, he also gives you eight assists. He rebounds way above average for normal guards. Like a point guard, shooting guard compared to James Harden. His rebounding is so above them. He gets into passing lanes. He hustles. He's basically unguardable. He's unguardable as it gets in basketball and NBA history. And you're willing to trade James Harden for the package being... Karis Lover at the top of it. Now, if four to five first round picks are in this deal, that is inexcusable. Tilman Fertitta is to blame for this. I'm not going to get into his political views. Apparently, Harden, part of him wanting to be out was because of Fertitta, Tilman Fertitta being a strong Republican. Like, I'm not going to get into that because that's just the last thing that I need is Democrats and Republicans. Like, I'm not a party. I don't, I mean, not that I don't care about it, but now it's not the time for that. You guys can think what you want in that, but. The point is, Tim Fertitta as a basketball owner has not been great. He hasn't surrounded Harden with talent. And I know that's the GM's job, but the one time Tim Fertitta has actually tried to go into his pocket was to pay Harden that two-year extension, which would pay him about $102 million. But it's too little too late. That should have been offered maybe two years ago, a year ago. Right now, the Rockets are dysfunctional. Thankfully, they were able to get two picks for Covington because if they had kept Covington and say no team is willing to offer much, then they would have been stuck with him. I know being stuck with Robert Covington is not a bad thing, but it is when you don't have any stars around him. Like Robert Covington would be the best player on the Rockets without Harden and Russ there. Another thing is Russell Westbrook. If Harden is traded, Russell Westbrook would refuse to play for us. He wouldn't even show up. He'd just get his paycheck, and that would be it. So we are going to have to trade him. But at the same time, if you're trading Russell Westbrook for maybe, say, like an expiring contract, like say if you trade him for a, a Cody Zeller or you trade him for a Nichols Batum, are we really going to trade Russell Westbrook or average 27, 8, and 7 last season for expiring contracts when we gave up two first-round picks and two pick swaps? It doesn't make any sense. So to this point, if the Rockets are going to trade hard into the Nets and Russ to the Hornets, they need to keep those two guys. I don't think it's possible to restore their trust because it's just so blatantly obvious right now that they want out. So I don't think that's possible. But if you can keep these guys, do it compared to trading them for garbage because if the top player we're getting back is Karis LeVert, I'm still going to be a Rockets fan, but it's going to be tough to watch and cover this team knowing that Karis LeVert is the best player on this roster. That is inexcusable. He's, he hasn't shown enough to where he can be that all-star type MVP guy, like not even close. So I know he's a good player, don't get me wrong, but James Harden for Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie, Terion Prince, and that's maybe a first. Like For James Harden, when Drew Holiday just got all those assets, you, you traded the, the three picks, the two pick swaps for Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday. I think it's safe to say that the Rockets just aren't in a good spot right now. It's going to really depend on what they get. Hopefully, Russ is traded before Harden. Because say if we actually trade Russ and are able to get some assets, maybe we can flip them. Like I was trying to think of maybe flipping the 16 pick that we just got from the Blazers for a guy like Lonzo Ball. We know they just got uh, Eric Bledsoe. I forgot his name for a second. They got Eric Bledsoe right. He could start for them. Apparently, a lot of their fans want to keep Lonzo, which is expected. He's a good player. But a lot of executives around the league have been saying that Lonzo doesn't deserve to be paid like a top point guard. He might get maybe 11 to 12 to $13 million a year. And the Rockets, they're not likely to find a guy with a 16 pick of Lonzo's caliber. Now, I do feel for Lonzo because he had so much pressure on him coming out of college. Of course, he was being compared to guys like LeBron James. I know that wasn't fair, but... LeVar Ball, too, had played a big part in that. He also went to the Lakers. When you go over to the Lakers, man, it's tough. We saw Kyle Kuzma's been dealing with fans. We saw Brandon Ingram get traded out of there, go to New Orleans, and now he's a legit all-star. He's a guy that can average 26. Like, if you're trading Harden, you need a Brandon Ingram back. A Ben Simmons fits right into that, but they're not willing to trade Ben Simmons, which doesn't make sense because Ben Simmons and Embiid haven't really proved anything. 
I mean, they had, of course, when they had J.J. Redick and Jimmy Butler, they were able to go to the Western Conference Finals, and they were really maybe possibly a shot away from going there. But they all they just had that was a such different team with better players. And right now, if you can get James Harden, who still has two to three of those MVP type seasons left, maybe even more, we don't know. To pair him with Embiid and then Daryl Morey, who's one of the best, if not the best, general managers. I mean, winning percentage was crazy high after he got Harden. So, especially under D'Antoni, they were, I think D'Antoni had the second highest winning percentage. So, three years right there. I mean, he was there 17, 18, 19, all those years. Well, technically, I guess he was there 16 to 20. But like, yeah, 17, 18, you guys get what I'm saying. So, I don't know, man. Like, it's not looking good. Uh, I mean... That Robert Covington trade really should surprise me because to see him go before Harden or Russ, it didn't make a lot of sense. You you would have thought that maybe the Rockets end up keeping Harden or Russ and say they pretend none of this happened. A month later, these guys are playing in Rocket uniform, and then you have Robert Covington, all these guys, Eric Gordon. But no, Robert Covington's trade, which just shows that the owner knows that Russ and Harden are out. I really hope they don't trade these guys. You have to think that you don't have to trade these guys, you can go into next season with Harden and Russ in your roster, and maybe Simmons and Embiid isn't working out, and you can go ahead and then trade Harden for a package of Simmons and picks, or you can trade Russell Westbrook. Say Russ puts up big numbers, which I know this is just completely out of proportion and not likely to happen at all. I don't think these guys will be Rockets on opening day, but say if they are, and then all of a sudden a team like the New York Knicks is like, Russ is playing well. I'd love to get him in our team, but I mean, would Russ really want to be in New York? I mean, I'm sure he would, but without fans... Like, like we saw Chris Paul said that he didn't want to go to the Knicks because he wanted that full New York experience. There wasn't fans, so would Russ feel the same way? I mean, I know he likes fashion and publicity, but it doesn't make sense. Like, a lot of this doesn't make sense. It's crazy. A year ago, we had championship aspirations. I mean, really, the last eight years we have. And then all of a sudden, we're going to be at the bottom of the Western Conference without a pick. I mean, you have to remember, we don't have our pick. It's going to be rough times ahead, but just stay positive. Hopefully, the Rockets make a smart decision. It's a lot of pressure on a new owner. Or excuse me, a lot of pressure on a new general manager. He comes in, he has to trade Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Robert Covington. He got a lot, though. He got two first-round picks for Robert Covington. I mean, we traded Capella and a first, and we got... So basically, we traded Capella and a first for two firsts. That's not bad, a first for Clint Capella. I mean, it's not very good, but, I mean, you just never know who that pick can be.